Your DNA is unique. Your life experience is unique. I once heard someone say, the world doesn't necessarily need a new message, but it needs a new messenger. And your willingness to be the messenger of what you've learned and what you know is incredible. And by the way, you don't have to do a book. You can be doing interviews. People will interview you. You know, you, you have to have some way of owning your expertise. But if you're feeling the nudge, for example, to put it into book form, I would just encourage you to begin because, you know, we have a client named David Chilton who we helped him get a lot of publicity and he's ended up doing a book called The Wealthy Barber, sold over 5 million copies. Hey, I'm Jade Ellison, a multi-passionate creative based out of New York City who's obsessed with personal development and anything business from marketing, branding, creating online programs to launches and helping you step into your true self so that you can share your gifts with the world. Gain insights with manifesting, creating life on purpose and get ready to elevate yourself in ways that will surprise even you. Included in your weekly dose of inspiration, get ready to be entertained, uplifted, and encouraged to take action with simple and easy to apply tips, tools, and strategies that fit into your busy daily life, sprinkled with some woo-woo along the way. From embracing your confidence to mastering success habits, setting achievable goals, and ways to harness positive mindsets and beliefs so that you can kick self-doubt and your inner critic to the curb where they belong. Whatever's on the topic call sheet, I'll help you navigate the raw, messy, and sometimes hilarious truths of achieving success, abundance, and happiness, all while encouraging you to become the best version of yourself. So think of me as your go-to girlfriend, talking over some coffee, getting real, and giving you some amazing advice to go from hot mess to thriving success. This is the Uber Savvy Life and Biz Podcast. Hey, welcome back to the Uber Savvy Life and Biz podcast, where together we'll unlock your true potential to design the life and business of your dreams. I'm your host, Jade Ellison, and today is a super exciting episode as we have special guest Steve Harrison with us. Steve has dedicated the past 30 years of his life helping authors and entrepreneurs promote their books, products, and services. Steve and his team have helped more than 15,000 authors, experts, and entrepreneurs promote their books, businesses, and become guests on radio and TV talk shows more than any other PR firm on the planet. As publisher of Radio TV Interview, RTIR, he's helped launch best-selling books such as Chicken Soup for the Soul, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the Finish Rich series, and the Dummies series, just to name a few. Every year, he presents the National Publicity Summit, where he gives publicity seekers the once-in-a-lifetime chance to meet face-to-face with producers, editors, and journalists from major media such as Good Morning America, The Today Show, Time Magazine, Family Circle, ABC's 2020, Dateline NBC, CNN, Fox News, and many others. So whether you're a budding author, you feel like you have a story to share, or you're already a published author, You're going to love what we're diving into today. But before jumping into this incredible wisdom with Steve, if you want weekly inspiration and would like to stay updated when I release new episodes with special guests like Steve Harrison, check out jadeellison.com and sign up for the VIP Insider List, where you'll get access to your Empowered Morning Mindset Checklist, an awesome download you'll get completely free just for signing up which will give you your ultimate caffeine-free boost to supercharge your mornings for success. So Steve, it is so incredible to have you on the podcast. I'm so thankful that you took time out of your very busy schedule to be a guest with us today. Well, Jade, it is an honor. Just great to be with the Uber Savvy folks and the Uber Savvy host. Thank you, Steve. You're awesome. You know, Steve is literally one of the nicest, most real guys that I have met in this world of writing and becoming an author. And he literally is the marketing genius that will help you go from nada to known. So Steve and I met, I would say, how long ago did we meet? Six months ago or so. Was that about it, I think? So I came into Steve's world through one of his two-day events that he hosted with Jack Canefield. And That was incredible because that really helped to personally bring insight and knowledge to myself with the book that I had started writing earlier in the year. I had about 14 chapters written 
And Steve, if it wasn't for you and Jack and Patty Aubrey, I would be completely lost right now. But because of your retreat, I have a 96 page book proposal that I'm getting ready to pitch to agents. And my first 14 chapters, I was able to get a small group of private readers and they helped by reading the chapters and rating it from a one to 10. So I knew which chapters to go back to and refine and which chapters were strong and had a clear story behind them. So I have to thank you for that because if it wasn't for your retreat, I don't know if I would even be continuing on my book journey. Well, we love hearing that. I'm thrilled to hear that. And good for you. I mean, you put yourself in a place where, you know, a lot of times people say, I didn't even know what questions to be asking. And you got more direction. And that's something that I think all of us who are putting messages out, whether it's in book form or whatever, a lot of times we don't get the feedback. We don't find out how is this landing for people. And certainly when you do a book, that was one of the secrets of creating more word of mouth, right? To get feedback before you actually publish it. So really proud of you. You model what you're talking about, where you know a lot and you want to know more and you want to be a perpetual student and it shows in your book proposal and everything else. Absolutely. Thank you. And I just can't thank you enough for all of that knowledge and wisdom that I received. And I continue to put it to use. So why don't we share with our listeners how you became drawn to the world of helping authors to step into their light so that their words would inspire and uplift others through their own personal stories and journeys. It all began with a woman I was in love with. <laughs> I remember this story. Please share it again. Yeah, well, you've met my wife, Laura, now, but when I actually went to Davidson College, ran inside Charlotte, North Carolina, and I was a sophomore, she was a senior. We dated for 10 weeks. She was, as they say, you know, she's two years older, so she was robbing the cradle, as they say, dating a younger guy. And what I did during the summers of college is I actually worked with this company and sold books door to door, which is a great experience. But we had a long distance relationship. I went to France my junior year. So Laura was from the Philadelphia area. So by the time I got through school and everything, she was in Philadelphia, my brother, was in the Philadelphia area. He was starting a magazine for radio and TV producers. That's cool. That they would read to find authors available for interviews. And I said, well, tell you what, Bill, I want to date Laura on a day-to-day -day basis and see if we're going to get married or, or what have you. So I'll, I'll work with you for three months, four months. You know, just the two of us in our bedroom apartment. I'm sleeping on a mattress, literally. And what we did at that time was, and we still do the publication, is authors would advertise in the publication, we would write copy for them to sell them to the radio and TV producers. Amazing. Amazing. So he did this publication for radio and TV producers with the knowing that he wanted to help authors get themselves out there? Yeah, actually what happened was he reversed the formula. He wanted to have a publishing company and he purchased a newsletter media paid to subscribe to because they would want to know, hey, if there's a big author that's coming through town in a few months to Philadelphia, they wanted to have advance notice. This is, you know, basically pre-internet. And he said, hey, what if I reverse the formula? Which is actually a good question for all listeners to think about. Hey, what if we just changed the formula? What if I charged the people who really want and go to more media for free? It's really like a catalog of guests. We told writers to, hey, write some copy and send it to us. And then we put it out there in front of the media and a lot of times they didn't get many interviews, but if we rewrote the copy and rewrote the headline often, then they did a lot better because we, and this is a, a useful lesson for everybody, is to you're trying to get publicity, you're trying to sell the media on you as a guest. Yes. Not award-winning book. See, the author typically talks about the book. Award-winning book. My book is so great. It's been hailed by so-and-so and so-and-so. And the podcaster doesn't care. The radio producer doesn't care. They want a good interview. What are you going to do for my audience? And you know, it's got to be catchy. So amazing, amazing. And here we are. I married Laura. We've got three kids. Our oldest is 30 now. So here we are. Bill and I still work together. Amazing. And I just kind of want to like dive into this just a little bit more if we can to kind of like. Sure. So you were in France junior year. And when did you come back and dive into this three month journey with wanting to help Bill? 
So I went back to college. That's the other thing. Junior year, I still go to North Carolina. So it's long distance relationship with Laura. Okay. And Laura's incredible, by the way. I met Laura and I had the opportunity to work closely with her during your two day retreat, which was super awesome. And she works with us now doing consulting and everything. And basically the fall after I graduated from college was when I said, oh, we'll I'll work with you for a couple months. Cool. That's when it was. Okay. And then at uh, what point did you continue to sleep on his floor to kind of like test the waters and the relationship with being in the same city with Laura? Let's see. As I recall, I think it was that year we worked together. And then next February, I think the next February is when I proposed. So about 14 months later, I proposed. And, you know, at that point we were doing better. I was still getting paid straight commission. Like, you know, if I can relate to the whole, if you don't make a sale, you don't eat kind of mindset, right? Like, you know. The starving artist mindset. I know what that feels like. You got to make things happen, right? You know what it's like, right? So what's great about it is it always gets you focused on value for people. What will help people? So that's where things like, let's just write the copy for them for free. Let's just include it. If they want to write their own, fine. But anything you can do to take away problems for the client, you know, they're paying you for X, but you may observe, okay, they're paying to send some copy and have us put it in front of the media, but hey, we don't have to just play it that way. We can actually rewrite it for them. We know a thing or two about this. And of course, we got better and better and better at it. And just to share with our listeners, copy is the words that you see when you get an email or when you're reading an online publication, like a newsletter, a blog, that's what copy is. And when Steve shares, we rewrite the copy or we rewrite the headlines. The headline is basically that title that you see that grabs you so that you feel compelled to read the blog or read the newsletter or read that magazine, because that's what's going to get you connected or drive that interest for the rest of the story. And if it's going to connect you with the story or if it's going to be something that you're going to want to share with somebody else who might find value from that. So that's amazing that you had that foresight with your brother then because copy, I feel, is something that people in general need help with. Whether or not you're even an author or a budding author, just even writing an invite to a wedding or an invite to a party, you want to entice the guest or the listener or the viewer to want to be part of that party. So I really love that you and your brother were able to do that. So why don't you share with our listeners, what was that first breakthrough for you and your brother on this journey of helping authors and getting them in front of the right news outlets and publicity? What was your first breakthrough? Well, you know, what's fortunate was we were putting out our publication and it was working. People were telling us they were getting so many interviews and things and we would rewrite copy if it wasn't working and we saw that working. And then we had a national TV show host one time who literally read the opening paragraph we had written to introduce the show. Cool. So we knew we were really on to something. What was that show? It's a good question. That show was, I think the opening line was, would you raise your child differently today if you knew you were going to die tomorrow? Pretty good opening hook, you know? Such a good opening. Yeah. So you always want to suit the writing to the audience. For us, these two guys, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, he's been very public about saying, hey, they came when they were, I think, $125,000 in credit card debt. They were speakers. They were telling stories to their audiences. And people would say, hey, that story about the puppy, is it in a book somewhere? And they said, okay, we've got to try to have a book. And so they got their book done after a lot of persistence and failure, finally got a book deal. And they came to us and said, hey, we've heard about you guys help people get publicity. Amazing. And they had learned from M. Scott Peck, the author of The Road Less Traveled, that you want to try to average at least, you know, regular series of interviews, at least one a day, if you really got huge goals. And they did. Wow. And so we started putting them out there and we created the very first hook, I think, for Jack was, can your audience identify these famous failures? Now, what's that have to do with chicken soup for the soul, right? Well... He would get on and he would read descriptions of, you know, somebody who failed multiple times running for office. And if you could guess 
who the person was, you'd win a free copy of this book that no one had heard of called Chicken Soup for the Soul. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And what's really good about Jack and Mark is they were very committed. Most people stop after a couple months. They just kind of move on. Really? That soon? After a couple months? Most authors do. Most authors are kind of like on to the next book. Whereas the way to be successful as an author or as an entrepreneur is stay with it for at least a year. I mean, they were even more committed. So we worked with them for a number of years. And after about a year and a half, they hit the New York Times bestseller list. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. And were they averaging that one interview a day based on your guidance? Yeah, they, that, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and they did multiple things. We're not the only thing they did. I mean, he started referring people left and right to us and giving us so much credit for their success. And then we get a call from a lady. She said, my husband has a thousand copies of his book in the garage. We've self-published. We hired a PR firm. We didn't get much at all. Can you help us? I said, okay, what's the title of the book? She said, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Nobody had ever heard of that, right? Amazing. Amazing. We began getting them a publicity as well. And when she called you, it was after you had helped Jack and Mark right. get their book to the bestseller list. Yeah. And then she saw that. So it was kind of this ripple effect where you helped them and then she kind of got wind of what you were doing and then came to you. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of times when you're in a small business, one client can make all the difference. They can spread the word. Maybe they become really well known. And now people get it. They get what you do and they trust you. And for Robert, he likes to do something when he's communicating, when he's doing interviews. He likes to, what he calls, draw the line in the sand and dare people to step over. So he'd always oh, like, there's two, the rich teach their kids about money differently than the poor. And if you think your house is an asset, you're thinking like a poor person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People are like, what? Right. He likes to stir it up, but that makes a great guest. And so, I mean, it's just been a real wonderful privilege to help authors and entrepreneurs who they've got a message, they want to share it, but they don't quite know what to do. And we're also close to what we do. So it's helpful when we talk about what to be saying to media or how to message what you're doing. It's like you feel like you can do it for everybody else. But when it's you, right, it's good to have somebody else with expertise. I absolutely agree. And I want to dive into that a little bit more with what to say, how to get established, whether you're new in the world of becoming an author or you're already an established author, at what point do you start pitching media? And are you able to do it as an individual or do you need an agent to do that? Or is that what you and your team do for when people come to you? We definitely have services that can help people do it and shorten the, we have training. We also do an event where we actually on Zoom make it so that authors and entrepreneurs meet one-on-one -on -one for a few minutes with TV producers and podcasters and journalists. It's our National Publicity Summit. Yes. You know, here's the thing. I think, you know, whatever you can do to get publicity is good. And the media would rather hear from you directly as long as you know a few things. So when you talk about the messaging, right? So the messaging... The best thing you can do if you want to get on any kind of show is to tailor what you email them or what you communicate to them to them. All right. Absolutely. Yes. So you asked me one question, too, about when should people start? It used to be 10, 15 years ago, you would wait until your book comes out. But now it's very much about building your platform and your following. So people start following you. And then when your book comes out, great. You've got something to offer them. Plus, you have media relationships. I mean, Tim Ferriss, the author of Four Hour Workweek, he was doing interviews way before he ever had a book. And just nowadays, that's really a smart way to go. But I think in terms of messaging, you know, I would say people's favorite topic is themselves, right? Certainly. Everybody loves talking about themselves. Yeah. And if somebody, for example, you know, was... It's so easy to be off the mark unless you just take a look at, well, what's the formula of this media person? Some media, like news media, they want to talk about a timely topic, okay? So something that just happened in the news and you can comment on. So 
or something that's timely. I mean, one time we did a pitch, for example, to the Today Show by email. I said, timely show idea for the Friday before the Super Bowl. Perfect. And like in minutes, they contacted me and said, we want this guest. All right. So amazing. Yeah. So if you can be, but that's their formula, something timely. Okay. Now for like a podcast, for somebody like you, like if somebody was pitching you a timely thing, you might not be as interested perhaps, but if they said, Hey, I have some Uber savvy secrets. I love your brand Uber savvy. You know, they begin with you and say, you know, it occurs to me, you have a lot of people that are trying to do better in their life and their business. And I can give five killer tips for negotiation on negotiating anything. The other thing they might want to say is I love your episode on anxiety and the three ways you gave anxiety, which by the way is a very good episode. I listened to it today, you know. You're awesome. Thank you. You know, and you over delivered. You gave more than three. You gave a lot. And within the three, there were all these others. You know, it's just good. So they learn something and people think, oh, I don't have time to do that. I want to hire a PR firm. Well, guess what? PR firm, most PR firms, they're pitching. I had a Fox News producer say, I get pitched cooking shows from PR people just so they can kind of check off Oh, I called Fox News. It's like a telemarketer, you know. But that's not relevant. I mean, even I know that. It's not relevant. Not their, it's not their formula. It's not. It's Fox News. Yeah. So at least a both and approach. When you can tailor, make a list of the media you most want. And there are some other ways of just getting out there, you know, like you don't have to do everything yourself, but tailoring the pitch to their formula. If you notice this show likes to tell inspiring stories about women who've reinvented themselves, then you want to lead and say, if you're that author in the negotiation book, you want to say, hey, my husband walked out on me and I had to learn how to negotiate and I had to reinvent myself. So now it's, whoa, yeah, you fit my formula. I'd love to have you. So that's the key. Brilliant. And I love that you're talking about this formula because I feel like that's where a lot of the TED Talks, your TED Talk was fantastic. I've watched that several times over. There's a formula to that as well, like that long form storytelling. Is that something that you'd be open to sharing with our listeners as well? Yeah, it's such a good point. You know, I think it was Ogilvy, the advertising guy said, the medium is the message, right? So every medium, if you study what's been successful, so we help people get TEDx talks. And yes, you're right. I did a TEDx talk on how to sell without selling your soul. I love that one. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I looked at well, what's been successful, right? When you really study success, it improves your plan. What's been successful? What can I model? You know, there's always places you can't model things. It's just certain things just aren't true. You can't do. But I'll give you an example. Like when I studied some of the most successful TEDx talks, I noticed something I never would have realized unless I looked is a lot of them. So a, a TEDx talk is about one idea worth spreading. So that's the first thing. What's one idea that's really worth spreading? Okay. And for me, the idea, I wanted to say, you know, people think selling is manipulating. Selling is love. That's really what it is. Now, when I shared that though, people said, well, it's not love. Come on. I've been in sales. We both understand that when you're trying to serve people, if you love them, you serve them better, right? Absolutely. And if you have a passion about what you're speaking about, then technically the passion is the love for that thing. And it's going to resonate at a higher vibration and speak to the person that you're sharing it with. Yeah. And I noticed at the very end, how did they end? And I noticed the ones I was watching, they all kind of ended with a certain like thing for the future. And I didn't know how to end. But I said, you know, I need to have cast some kind of vision or some inspirational thing. And so then I didn't know what I was going to do. But my point is the fact that I was now asking that question, how could I give them that? Which is related to media. If you say, gosh, okay, this TV show, they seem to want some quick inspiration in the morning or maybe a makeover. How could I do a makeover? And now ideas come to you about how you can give them what they want. And if you give the media what they want, they'll give you what you want. I mean, you're getting free airtime. You're getting a chance to tell people where to go and get more information or buy your book or get on your list or what have you. I love that. And I feel like what I share with some of the clients that I've coached, 
what you offer complements that because I feel like it's easy to want to share what you're passionate about, that love of your sale. But at the same time, you have to keep it succinct and bring that value to the outlet like you're saying. So especially whether it be a TEDx talk, which is long form storytelling or a media pitch when you're on the Today Show and you only have, what would you say? Is it 60 seconds or two minutes that people get on the Today Show or shows like that? Yeah, I mean, there are some segments are two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes, four minutes, you know, depends. But yeah, it's quick. Yeah. And it goes by very fast. And you have to actually talk faster than would normal, like even faster. You have to bring your most energetic self to it. Absolutely. You have to be energetic and you also have to have those three to four key points that you know you want to hit. And it's kind of like steps in a dance routine or ingredients for a cake in the kitchen. You want to make sure that they're all there on the counter for you or that you have the right shoes on for your dance so that when you go to do it, it's there. And that's what I feel like rehearsing a little bit. Well, I would say if you're going to be doing something like the Today Show or you're going to be doing a TEDx talk, you absolutely have to rehearse and spend time because the more you give, the more you'll get. Meaning the more you give to that story, the more you give to that prep, the more you'll get in return because you're going to be giving more value. And then that will actually attract more of your future readers or more of your future clients who will really benefit from the solutions you're providing for their problems. Yeah, it's, you know, you use the word passion earlier. It's so true. I mean, letting your passion show is so important and also practice. Now, practicing interviews, practicing your speaking. And the ironic thing is, to be your best self, which is what this podcast is all about, right? Which is what you and I are all about, helping people be their best self. It's an interesting irony that we have to practice, which feels artificial, in order to let our light shine, to really be, to get out of the way. And so it's both passion, it's art, but it's also skill and practice. And I think that can be encouraging to everybody. I know on a separate example, when my father passed away about a year ago, my brother and I decided we're going to do the eulogy together. And I'm like, look, no problem. we will do it. I'll put some notes together and I want to be in the moment. But he's like, no, we really should practice. We should work with one of our very own speaking coaches. I'm like, well, I don't know. But we did. And I'm so glad we did because I was prepared for certain emotional things and certain transitions because the two of us were doing it together. The point is, we may hate to practice, but it really pays dividends and it gives you more confidence. Absolutely. And I'm so sorry about your father. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And that's an emotional thing to go through. That's a big step that you and your brother got the speaking coach to help you with that because like you said, you're going to go through your emotions especially with something so personal to yourself, I'm sure that gave you kind of that guidance of saying this and then going into this and then, you know, finishing out the experience together. And that probably resonated more so too with the guests who were there to support you during your loss. Yeah. Did you infuse any stories to kind of like lighten the... Oh, absolutely. We had it outlined. We had stories and our coach found a moment. He said, hold it, pause there because it'll get a big laugh. And we did. We got a huge laugh. And the thing about it is, I guess initially, right, I probably said, well, just thinking to myself, you know, I want this to be authentic. This isn't a show. This is, this is a funeral for my dad. And yet, from my background, I knew that actually to be a steward of people's time, people are coming and they don't know my dad. They want to know. And so we wanted to give my dad a good send off, but I also owe it to the audience to have a plan and have a little practice so that we can be in the moment. And that I think is what we're really talking about is how do you get clear on things? Whether you're writing a book, whether you're giving a speech, whether you're giving a toast at a wedding, it's okay to practice and have some skill and get some feedback because you can be your most authentic when you have a clearer plan and some confidence. Absolutely. And when you have the right tools and when you have somebody who's been there or somebody who's able to coach others to do 
the thing that you're looking to become successful in, like Steve and what he offers at Author Success and finding somebody who's a few steps ahead of you who could really give you that confidence and that certainty and that knowledge within yourself to take that first step and feel secure and confident with what it is that you want to achieve, whether it is your book or starting a new online business or starting a coaching business or going for your dream, whatever it is, there's always going to be somebody who could help guide you even better than if you were to go online and kind of put all the pieces together and hope you could figure it out. And that's usually when you give up after those couple of months because you can't figure it out sometimes on your own. You do need somebody who's been there, who is the expert, and that could show you that beautiful golden road to success. I think another thing too that having feedback from an expert does is a good coach will show you your strength, what you have. So you know, it's funny you mentioned the TEDx talk, whereas I'm like, all right, I need to practice what I teach, which is I need to get feedback. Darn it. You know, I'm not ready, though. My talk isn't exactly the way I want it to be. Like, I like to get it all great so that really, I think subliminally, nobody can give me any new ideas. I've already covered it all. And then at least I'm really open now. Jeffrey, who runs our program here on getting TEDx talks, I said, you know what? I really should just share with people what I'm thinking about saying. And I did a very half-baked version of the talk. And I said, I've learned to do this. Say, what do you like about it first? When you're kind of an infant and you're just getting going, it's real important to know what people like because it's easy to get deflated with criticism and discouragement. And I said, what do you like about it? And then I did ask, what's one way to improve it? But a lady said, you know that story you told? I love the fact that you mentioned one of your parents in there because, and they told me why, I was going to delete it. But I kept it. It made the story better. So knowing what you have is so important, whether we're talking about doing interviews, speaking, and asking your clients that. Yes. What do you value about what we're doing? Oh, gosh, I didn't know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, what would be your ideal outcome if I were able to help you achieve your goal in a way that someone else couldn't? Yeah. 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 Or like if somebody said, Jade, you're a fantastic host. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I've heard that from different people, but, you know, people have different reasons. Why do you say that? And they might say, wow, whatever they say is like, oh, okay, I need to keep doing that. Yes. All right. I was thinking of changing. I was thinking that might be a mistake. Absolutely. There's some things that I think even in this first season of the podcast, what I might do differently for season two, and then I'll have somebody at Pilates or one of my friends at the gym say something about an episode that I did. And I think, okay, I'll keep that in. So yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So that brings us to the middle of the episode. And if you're enjoying this episode, if you could share it with three friends that you feel would love the topics discussed today, that would be awesome because you never know who you could uplift. And if you can give it five stars on the podcast listening app that you're on, it just helps get this podcast in front of more like minds like yourself and also allows me to keep bringing you amazing content like this and have incredible guests like Steve on the show. And also be sure to check out the show notes to find out how to stay connected with Steve and learn more about his programs. I feel like when I look out into Amazon or the bookstore, there's so many new authors that come out and I realize a lot of them are self-published authors. What would you say to our listeners who might not even think that they have a book in them, but they definitely have lived a rich, in-depth life and they have a story to tell and maybe they do have that little spark that's nudging them and saying, you might want to write a book to leave this for generations to come to learn from. Yeah, I think most of us undervalue what we know and what we've been through. And it's kind of like we think we have to be the foremost expert in the world or something or a PhD. And we think of all the reasons why we're not qualified. And that is the challenge for every author, expert, entrepreneur. Those questions will come. But if you think about it, you're unique. Your DNA is unique. Your life experience is unique. 
I once heard someone say, the world doesn't necessarily need a new message, but it needs a new messenger. And your willingness to be the messenger of what you've learned and what you know is incredible. And by the way, you don't have to do a book. You can be doing interviews. People will interview you. You know, you, you have to have some way of owning your expertise. But if you're feeling the nudge, for example, to put it into book form, I would just encourage you to begin because, you know, we have a client named David Chilton who we helped him get a lot of publicity and he's ended up doing a book called The Wealthy Barber, sold over 5 million copies, okay? So cool. But here's the thing. He said, and he was on like the equivalent of Shark Tank in Canada, Dragon's Den. So he's all about revenue and ROI. I mean, this is a money guy and a business guy. And he said, I think writing a book, even if you don't sell any copies, is one of the best things you could do. And he likes to sell copies. Don't make a mistake. I said, well, why? He said, it's just the most incredible chance to learn, to grow, personal growth, to meet people. You start following that nudge and then... You learn more and you meet people and you get more confidence. And so I think it's one of the things that if you're feeling the nudge to do it, whether it's a book or frankly, anything that's on your heart that you've been thinking about for a while, just take a step or two and have some people help you. Because a lot of times you say, man, I'm so glad I'm doing this. I really do know my stuff. Plus, remember, with a book, you can research, you can interview other people. You don't have to have all the answers. You can be the reporter, the researcher. Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich. I mean, really, he interviewed Andrew Carnegie and his friends. Yes. And he said, here's what I discovered. You could do that. So there's lots of ways to make writing a book successful for you if you're feeling the desire to do it. And yeah, it's great. I love that. Absolutely. And I feel like there's different genres of books, too. If it's a book on education or inspiring others, that would be part of the nonfiction world. But if you want to entertain and just tell stories that kind of get channeled to you through whether it's after meditation or some type of inspiration that you get that you want to share a kid's story or you have the next Harry Potter series, start writing that down. There's a reason you're getting those insights. It's because you have this creative aspect within you that's wanting to speak and to go out and help others see the world differently through story. And I love that you shared that. And real quick, do it for you. Do it for you first, because you're guaranteed to get the payback. Like, wow, you know, I'm feeling led to do this, to try this. Great. Enjoy the journey. Now, I'll share with you a story. A guy named Clint Rogers came to my training, right? And the very first training we did with him was your story matters and storytelling is important. And he comes to us after about two or three hours. He goes, I know you're saying the stories are important, but I just don't think anyone's really going to care about my story. And his story wasn't even real. It was his story, but it was also about really mainly about how his father had had a terminal illness and went to India and found a faith healer. And he's like, I just don't know if anyone's going to really care. I said, OK, let me ask you something. Have you shared your story with a few people. He said, yes. I said, would anyone say that it really made a difference for them? And he was trying to say no, but he could think of one person that said, yeah, I kind of, made, you know, it really made a difference. I said, well, then you're saying you have a story. You're just telling me you have a story that makes a difference for people. And he had to say, yeah, darn it. You know, Steve's right. Well, we kept working with him. Before the book even came out, we helped him land a TEDx talk. He's had over 2 million, 2.3 million views to his TEDx talk. Wow. What's the name of his TEDx talk? Oh, that's a good question. Clint Rogers. If you hadn't asked me that question, the title I should know, but if you look up Clint Rogers, you'll find it. Perfect. Yeah. He's sharing the story and he teaches about Ayurveda from a teacher, right? But look, he's a new messenger. There's lots of people talking about Ayurveda. And Ayurveda, for those tuning in, that's just a different style and healing modality for using natural remedies from the earth. Am I right? Yes, as best as I understand it myself, too, right? And that's what we understand with Ayurveda. <laughs> but you are, see why you're such a good pot. You're the translator, you know, the, 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 <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah. And my point is, your story matters. And you have no idea 
I mean, Robert Kiyosaki, I said, did you know you were going to sell 40 million books when you were off in that, you know, off by yourself writing the book? And he said, or living in the car trying to get his life together with his right. wife. For those who don't know that story, my goodness. Yeah. Go pick up that book and know that Steve helped launch that amazing journey of 40 million books. That's incredible. Yeah. And when you tell your story, you never know how people are going to resonate. And just the fact that, hey, you're one of them, they can relate. Awesome. That is so cool. I'm so curious how you feel about authors going the self-publishing route first before going to pitch their book to a publisher and having more of a, I would say, mass distribution, especially with all the changes that are going on with the publishing world right now and everything becoming so readily available on Amazon under eBooks. Yeah. You know, there have been so many changes and we've helped people do both. We've helped people self-publish when that makes sense. We've helped people land publishing deals. One thing that's changed recently is it used to be that people would look down, oh, this book self-published. Uh, a few years ago, that was really the case. Now, because Amazon is like 70% of the market, then self-publishing is much more prevalent. Even people who can get publishing deals are deciding to self-publish because they make more money per book. They get it out sooner. But here's the caveat. We say, however you publish, you want to have a level three book, which means you know, a level one is where it just looks self-published. It looks like you did the cover yourself. I see. Level two is people look at your book and they just don't have the heart to tell you that it really could be better. But level three is where it looks professional and it's engineered to do what you want. It's create word of mouth, get speaking engagements, get you publicity. Now, level five is it becomes a classic in its field like Chicken Soup or Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You can't really control that. But you can say, hey, I want to have a professional looking book and self-publishing now. Here's the other thing. Literary agents are looking for people who have a following already. And it seems kind of unfair, like, well, gosh, it'd be easier to get a following if I had a book. And yeah, sure. But they want people who've got 50 to 100,000 followers because they're going to be risking money to publish a book. Plus, there's so many people out there that are influencers that they can publish. You know, more and more, we are suggesting for people to self-publish. We have a whole service where we guide people on doing a manuscript and then we can actually publish the book for them. Amazing. You know, I often say there's more than one way to be right. I just have that philosophy. And I'm in Steve's ongoing program as well. And the section that I'm in provides the outlines of how to get your thoughts organized, so that when you go to write your book or when you go to write your first book, you have that format that's really there to support you, to set you up for success to finish your book, which is what I love most about your programs. There's the different worksheets and other things to kind of like spark our creativity to keep going as well. And you're amazing coaches. You have such amazing coaches. Can I share an experience that I've had with one of your coaches? Sure. So I've been working with Deborah Englander, and she was in the acquisitions department for Macmillan, which is a huge publishing house. And I've been lucky enough to work with her on several different coaching calls. And she's helped me tremendously on my book proposal. And I'm at a point right now where I'm about to pitch my book proposal to an agent. Now, I also am still keeping in my back pocket going the self-publishing route, depending which one is going to pull me forward because I know I have a really strong book and also working with Debbie, she's seen my proposal several times and she's like, Jade, you have a really strong proposal. And I have to thank you for that as well, because if I didn't get the example that you shared with me, I wouldn't have known to add the additional diagrams and give it that pop of color and really put my own personality into it rather than making it this 96 page text document, which could get really boring and it could look like just a report rather than something that will entice the potential acquisition department. Am I saying that right? Totally. Which would entice the person who reads it in the acquisition department to want to move it down the line or up the line to the people who would ultimately choose, yes, we could publish this book or not. So I have to thank you tremendously for that because that's been incredibly helpful. And Steve will share 
later in the episode how to stay in touch with him and the programs that he actually has that could support you on your book publishing journey. And to your point, having models, right? So if you're going to be doing a book proposal, what's one that's been successful? You know, and we were able to share one that had gotten a million dollar advance, right? There's ways or shortcuts, proven shortcuts. There's models you can use for these things to be able to do them better and do them faster. Absolutely. Absolutely. What would be an ideal vision for you with your company and what you would love to truly support authors with? Kind of an ideal vision. You know, we focus a lot with authors on publishing books and promoting books. We also share with them ways of monetizing beyond the book. And so I think it's funny. I, we often feel like people just tell us how much they value our service and we're marketing and publicity people, but hey, you know, sometimes it said the cobbler's kids don't have any shoes. And, you know, I think there's always an aspect of we're so busy helping our clients be better known that we are even more aware of like, hey, we could be doing this, we could be doing that. So a lot of it's getting the word out. Absolutely. And it's great to be on your podcast. I can check. I did something today here, new and fun to do the interview with you. And I hope you're having fun because that's what I definitely want to open up the space when I have incredible guests like you on the show. I want it to be fun. It's not like this regimentated, okay, I'm going to ask you this, this, this. Like, I want you to feel like we're just having a conversation. Yeah. And for those tuning in, it feels like you're just listening to two good old friends get together and talk about something that matters to both of them. Yeah. No, I just love what you're doing. And, and I think what's great is you have been focused on, hey, how can I be my best, right? So you're teaching it, but you're also walking it. And that's always great. You know, we want, my vision is more clients like you, Jade, more people that are focused on excellence and learning and what they don't know, what they could do to better serve people. That's my vision. <laughs> I love it strong-minded, tenacious, those who believe in themselves that want something more in life, definitely get in touch with Steve. That is awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I like what, you know, one of the themes of your show too is what can you control? What can you do? What can you take action on, right? And so that's a recipe for success in anything. And I like when you talk body, mind, spirit, because I do think personally, I think there's a spiritual component of let me open myself to what the Lord wants me to do, what God wants me to do, right? But if I don't put myself in that posture, like there's things I can do to at least receive, you know? And the balance of those two things, I think, is so, is a mystery, but it's powerful when we're doing those. And when it comes from that place, I feel like that's when your voice, your words are heard at the most incredible amplitude because you're speaking from that pure place. I'll share a story with you. There's a lady a number of years ago. She came to me, she had lost 100 pounds, and she wrote a book with recipes where she substituted, you know, like how to make a healthy lasagna, basically. And she went to the local copy shop and did this book herself. And she said, can you help me get publicity? So we began getting her interviews. And she was so genuine. She was a housewife from Iowa with this story. And people were buying her book. And then Macmillan said, hey, we've heard about your book. We want to, I know you've totally self-published. We want to buy the rights to your book, which they did. And then she was so good, they got her on QVC. She became a regular on QVC and she sold over 3 million copies. And I interviewed her years later. I said, so what was your secret? And she said, well, the Holy Spirit is my marketing director but I do the legwork. And I'm like, amen. That is the deal, you know? I love that. I love that. What is the name of her book? Her name was Joanna Lund. She's since passed on, the late Joanna Lund, and she did a number of cookbooks, L-U-N-D, Joanna Lund. And she was a woman of great faith. And I think that's a component of this success that we often don't talk about. And then the problem, I think, sometimes in churches or religious circles is people aren't talking about goals and what you can control and what you can do, you know, but it's the two things, the grace, the power, the intentionality. She modeled it. I love that. I love that. Yes. That's like the divine triangle that comes together. You, the higher power, God, 
your creativity and then the guidance that you get when you just trust in that higher faith. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I would love to leave our listeners with this incredible quote. Success is the progressive realization of predetermined, worthwhile, personal goals. Paul J. Meyer. So just to recap this incredible episode with a marketing and publicity genius, Steve Harrison, who helped launch the paths of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Chicken Soup for the Soul, the Finish Rich series, and the Dummy series, just to name a few why it's so important to have the support that's needed to put yourself out there and get the publicity you need for your story to be shared with others because that's where the true inspiration and where you can really help bring insights and your knowledge to others who can use the solutions to any personal stories or any personal problems that you have gone through as well as the formula when it comes to pitching to the right news outlet, making sure that you're bringing value to their audience and also giving them that appreciation for what helped you and how you could help their audience. And when you use storytelling and you use your own life experience as your medium for your message and you become that messenger, whether it be through your business, through your personal life, even if you feel like, your story doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. You have your own unique DNA. You have your own unique life. And what you live through matters. What you have gone through matters. So whether it's through a nonfiction storytelling or whether you want to just entertain others and be that next Harry Potter series, even if you're going to do it, just remember you have to start for you. You have to start for the person inside of you, for yourself, because once you feed your soul and once you give to your spirit and once you open up to that greater faith, that guidance, that's how you know you're taking the right steps in the right direction. And if self-publishing is something that is exciting, that sparks an interest to you, make sure you strive for that level three style book. You want that book that looks like it could have been professionally published. That means an incredible capturing cover, the right title, the right copy, having guidance with incredible coaches like Steve's team to make sure that they help refine and give you that guidance so that when you do put your work out there, it's going to be something that you're really proud of. And just remember that there's those who have walked the walk before you Those like Steve and his team who have helped their authors sell hundreds of millions of books because of the right formula, pitching to the right people who want to hear what you have to share. So Steve, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. What is something that you would love to leave our listeners with and how could they find out more about what you offer and the programs that you have? Well, if they're interested in writing a book or getting published, you know, our website, authorsuccess.com, if they go there, we have a free report called Six Figure Mistakes Most Authors Make and How to Avoid Them. So wherever you are, if you're at the concept stage or if you've been working on a book, that I think would be very helpful. That's authorsuccess.com. And if you want to get publicity, whether you're an entrepreneur with expertise and you want to get on podcasts and radio and TV and, you know, different media outlets, If you go to bestsellerpublicitytools.com, I've got three resources just to give you as free giveaways. One is I'm going to share three sample publicity pitches so that one I mentioned where the Today Show instantly responded, you'll get the exact email that I sent. I've got an ebook called Formulas for Fame, 501 Proven Formulas, Headlines. This can be great for anything, any kind of content you're writing, if you're wanting to get publicity or anything you're writing. Five Formulas for Fame, that's a free ebook. And then we have a training with four veteran TV producers talking about how to get on national TV. So I just so appreciate you inviting me. Wanted to give some gifts that could help people and they'll get into my world. So that's bestsellerpublicitytools.com. I think would be great. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I will be putting all of these links in the show notes 
So make sure wherever you're tuning into this, that you check out the show notes for this episode so that you absolutely could jump in and grab those incredible free gifts from Steve and his team. Thank you so much, Steve. That was such a fun episode and I absolutely adore having you on the podcast. I know our listeners will find such great value and I just appreciate you so much. Well, hey, I appreciate you. I knew this was going to be fun to chat. Didn't know what we were going to talk about. I think we covered some good ground and thanks for everything you're doing to inspire people to live their dream life and get their message out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Uber Savvy Life and Biz podcast. That was awesome. We appreciate you. Stay committed to your vision, take consistent action, and know that great things are on the other side of that door. Because remember, only you hold the key to unlock your dream life. So why not start today? I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Can I just say, you're awesome. You just finished an episode of the Uber Savvy Life and Biz podcast. If you like this episode, feel free to leave a nice review and rate it five stars if you found it helpful. But if not, please don't rate it four stars. Just ignore this part. However, if you did like it, make sure you share it with a friend who may find some value in the topics discussed today. Be sure to share it with them because you never know who you could uplift. Also, if you want more, check out the show notes in the description, which would include any links that may have been mentioned in this episode. Are you still listening? Are you waiting for a blooper reel? That'd be a really fun idea to throw in at times. But seriously, are you tired of foggy mornings? Go to jadeellison.com to grab your ultimate caffeine-free boost to supercharge your mornings for success. That's right, your empowered morning mindset checklist. Y'all, great day is just a thought away. All right, this is exciting. Cool, so we'll get started. Steve, you're awesome. Thank you. Great job. You're such a great guest, Steve. (laughs) Like, I mean, thank you so much. (laughs) You can't say that yet. We haven't done an interview. Okay, cool.